So bad lighting, but mark your day. Um, it's raining kind of hard, so I don't know how the turnout's going to be. But I think a lot of Easter events inside my town were canceled because of the rain. So people might show up to this one because part of it is indoors. I think that they are moving the things that were outside indoors now. So I don't know how the Easter egg hunt slash dog toenail trimming thing is going to go. This is what I'm wearing. Comfy big sweater because it's raining. But I also have this one. Just as big and comfy. Maybe more suitable because this one has rain on it. And I'm going to have to do multiple trips because my car is very small and I don't have my dad's truck today. It's raining and I left my tables outside, leaned up against the garage. So I gotta wipe all these off. So I just put two four foot tables in my car and they fit perfect. I don't know about the six foot table. I'm gonna have to see how we can finagle that into the car along with everything else. Oh my gosh, look at this six foot table in my tiny car. Let's see. I don't know if I can close the lift. <laughs> the window just shattered. <laughs> my sign came in the mail. So I ordered this sign from Amazon. I believe it was $35. I saw it on somebody else's YouTube channel that I can't remember her channel name. So I'll leave a picture. Um, she showed her sign come in the mail and I thought it looked really nice. So I went ahead and ordered one. This is a table runner. I'm calling it a sign, but it's a table runner. So you put it in like the middle of your table. As you can tell, it's very wrinkly. So I have it on my bed right now and I'm going to use my fabric steamer to steam out the wrinkles. Try to make it look professional, but the printing job on it is really nice. You know, that steams super easy. I kind of just hung it off the bed and then steamed it with one hand while it was like pulling on the ends. I mean, I missed a spot right here, but it looks pretty good and didn't mess up the colors or anything. So going to the vent now, just taking one load with the tables in it. And um, you know how like when you're watching someone do like a car vlog and you're just taking that entire time like, oh my gosh, this is so dangerous. I'm gonna see them get in a car accident. Like, and you just have all this anxiety because you see them driving and you don't think it's very safe what they're doing. Um, you don't have to worry because we're already here. That's how close I live to this event. Now I'm in the parking lot. And there are people setting up their tents in the parking lot, which is so wild because it's raining outside. So <laughs> my hair is definitely going to get frizzy from all the rain walking back and forth to the car to unload it. Um, they put me next to an Easter bunny and this other small business that makes custom crayons and like cool shapes. So that's super, super cool. I'm really excited that I'm like in the kid area and my daughter is going to be so stoked to see the Easter bunny. I can't wait for her to see him. So I'm going to do another load. I uh, go home, pick up more stuff, come back, keep doing that until I get everything. Okay. So last trip, um, I <laughs> went inside my house and redid my hair since it got rained on. And actually like market day miracle, it stopped raining, which I don't know if it's gonna um, stay not raining for the rest of the day, but there are people set up outside. So I really hope it doesn't rain for their sake. <sighs> but I'm getting excited everyone. I've talked to so far has been so sweet and nice and loading time okay so I didn't bring my folding shelf um, because I wanted there to be a lot more on the table than last time since last time that like chicken area was like really bare so we'll see if that was a big mistake but um, I can just ask my husband to bring it or go home and grab it really fast if I need it section back here is where the Easter Bunny is going to be so that's pretty cool and then we have face painting this is very fun this is like the kid area 
And then this is like custom crayons, which is so, so cool. My daughter's gonna love that. And then, let me show you this view. Look at this gorgeous view. So this is the dam that almost exploded a few years ago and my entire town was evacuated, but look at the lake. Ooh, and people get married right there. Okay, so this is my area. Um, they just told me to like set up in this like pillar, so I didn't know how to do the table. So I'm like experimenting with this, but I'm gonna do the flowers the same on this side again with the wheelbarrow. And guess who did not paint the sign? I lied to you. I didn't paint that sign. Oh my gosh, what is that? Yuck. Okay, so it's very nice. So Flowers exactly the same except for I put one more vase on this side. I need to like fluff them all up. They're all smashed. Um, I haven't decided who's going to go in the throne yet. Should it be the angry one? Or maybe the big one? I don't know. Maybe the big one because he has flowers. Or maybe he'll just stand right here. Okay, I'll decide. These in one spot. I'm still using this for the car hangers. I didn't buy anything else yet, so they're just gonna be kind of jumbled when people pull them off. Um, I'm just gonna do like Easter and chickens right here. And maybe I can work on chickens if, if it's slow for right now. I also didn't restock any bookmarks, but I brought some cotton yarn with me to make more bookmarks if I have time. Um, this is that hug that I made for that custom order. So if the guy comes today, I can give it to him. So I made this one for him, and then I also made a little, one of like the little critter style, um, because he asked if I can make him a pug after he saw this dog. So this is how his little pug turned out. So I just freehanded this. I used the same modified stitch, but I did a couple more loops to make the muzzle bigger. And then I just freehanded the ears. And then this um, pattern, Okay, the oval shape of the body is from the potato pattern, and then when I realized it was all hands, it was all like sewing, and it was every single part was like such a little tiny piece that I was just like, I'm just gonna freehand everything. So I give him limbs, he's sitting on his little butt, and he has a little tail. And I think he turned out really cute. His nose was a little smashed in. I wish I pulled out his nose a little bit or like used a bigger safety nose, but um, if the guy doesn't want this one, then I might keep it. And I have my Easter eggs. Back up. I have some Easter eggs. So I made a ton of little ducks. <laughs> and some of them I use like bigger yarn, like this one's with Bernat. This is, guy is not gonna fit inside an Easter egg. Um, the small like velvet burnouts definitely fit inside an Easter egg, and I think these ones are really cute. But yeah, some of them, this one's with Posh. I might have done one more row than I was supposed to on this one, I can't remember. So some of them I'm gonna have to really like try to shove in there. But I brought the bowl that I had the moss in for like the Easter eggs last time. I don't have to put them in Easter eggs. I can just put them like in the bowl and just have a bunch of little chicks. But I don't think I'm gonna need that sanding shelf, so I'm not gonna tell my husband to bring it. But I did forget to bring a chair. So here's the back of my booth, I guess. I don't really know if the setup is the best, but I'm kind of winging it. So I can just stand. I got, I got two legs. So there was this vendor outside and it started raining and they didn't have a canopy so I ended up driving home which I mean took 30 seconds and I grabbed my canopy and I brought it to them and then we set it up in the rain. So now my hair is not curled anymore and I was a little bit late setting up my booth um, so now there's people inside but I think the way I have it set up looks pretty nice. Um, absolutely hate this. Look at this little thing. But that's okay. I'd rather um, have wet hair and look a little disheveled than let somebody get rained on. <laughs> I made one sale already. It was a little um, frog critter for five dollars. And look, these pieces are just oh, just from like getting bumped up against everything. The, that color is coming off, so I'm gonna have to rearrange the flowers so I can put them on this side. Yep. So this is what I did on this side. I put a bunch of worms right here, 
Um, I've already had people talk about the angry worm. <laughs> people like this expression. Um, I'm in Blister right here. Absolutely wish I had something to like prop up those bunnies. I need to work on some individual ones. Super cute. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Okay, so it's 11.30, it's been going for half an hour. I, have I been ready for half an hour? No. Um, but that's okay, there's there's a lot of people in here. I'm right by the Easter Bunny, so it's super fun. I get to see all these little kids be happy. And also the face painter is here from the Arbor Day Festival. And I told her that she did an amazing job. I told her that those kids at Arbor Day Festival looked so cool. So um, I've met some of the other vendors and everybody's very, very nice. Sales. I, made, I sold the sunflower turtle that I've had for a while, I actually made it. Um, made it a long time ago. I made it with Michael's Home Slim and I hate that yarn, it's my enemy. So um, I sold it for 15 and I sold like a little critter frog for five and I got a custom order for a stitch. So I'm gonna finish showing the rest of my booth because I don't even think I got a clip of it last time. very frizzy. Okay, I'm not gonna worry about the way I look because I'm having a really, really great time. And everybody is super, super sweet. Everybody is really nice. Um, I've sold a bunch of stuff already. And I think it's really awesome because so many people are kids that I'm getting at. So let me show you my booth. So I didn't mention it, but I have made some more shrimpies. Those were from a pattern from Ribbler? Yes, they're from Ribbler and they were one of the first things I showed on my channel was I was making shrimp bouquets. Um, so I made some more shrimp and I was actually going to make some bouquets. Like there was a comment that suggested that I just always have a bouquet at my booth that says, I shrimply adore you. And I was going to do it and then I ran out of time. And also guess who forgot to bring bouquet bags again? Me. So I combined some of the things that are not little critters, like the smaller possums that I had, and I have one axolotl left. So I'm just doing everything right here is $7. I know those shrimp takes longer, but I just really like that pattern, and I think they're really cute. And then small turtles, finally running out of those. I didn't sell like any of them at the last um, market. I think I've only sold one keychain so far. I have five eggs left. Eggs are pretty popular. Um, I made these two car hangers last night and it's just Andy, Andy Light Creations pattern for the, the duck and I just put it on a swing. Um, I think I sold one so far. I, know, I sold a velvet bee and I finally sold one bunny. It was a purple bunny and the little girl who got it was wearing all purple so it's really cute how it matched. Um, my friend came and she picked out a chicken and a hatching chick and a turtle and I gave them all of them to her for $15 even though that was so cheap. And you guys, <laughs> I sold the big giant worm with like the groovy eyes. He went to his forever home and both the little pink worms went to their forever homes. And the little girl who bought both the pink worms is actually a little girl who goes to the library playgroup with my daughter because as, as you should know by now, I live in a very small town. So I've, a lot of the people that I've seen today, I actually know. <laughs> so I'll see that worm again because it's a little girl that goes to play group with, with my daughter. Um, and, and also guess what? We sold the cactus. So one cactus is gone. The lady said she really likes them. So she said she might come back and see me at the Wildflower Festival next week to look at the other cactuses I'm gonna bring. Um, so yeah, the booth is starting to look a little empty. This is my, where I've been standing, right there. And right now I've just been putting some tags on, like individual tags on things that I just put some of my chickens. Um, yeah. I'm like a little bit anxious because my phone is dying and I don't have like a power bank. So I need to buy one. I should get one before the next market. Oh my gosh, the little girl's so cute. I don't want to film people's clothes though. 
I wish I could walk around. There's looks like there's some really fun booths here. Okay, I'm probably making you dizzy. Bye. Okay, it's 1.30. Um, traffic's really high down. The booth next to me has been like popping all day. There's custom cranes. I want to walk around, but I feel like I'm gonna miss somebody from in my booth, even though I can see it straight across the whole building. So let me show you what it's looking like. So I haven't sold a single flower actually, but that's okay because I never made more sunflowers. Um, because I'm just forcing myself to work last minute for the wildflower festival. So we're down to two worms. I didn't put out the poop worm until like five minutes ago, so I don't know if people would have liked him. But isn't it so funny that he's the last worm? The angry one. Um, no one likes the coast the coasters or the headbands, so that's okay. I like them. This is the last bunny that I have left. This one's made with posh yarn and it's crochet counterclockwise and I did not flip it. Uh oh, your head is messy. Here you go, buddy. Okay. Chickens haven't been a big hit today, like the first market, but that's okay. These are the three that I made. Um, uh, Last time I used the Bernat um, ink well, so it was like the white and the black spots. And this time I I got the speckle, and I really like the speckle. I thought this one was like fun and Easter color, but maybe this isn't like a chicken crowd. I don't know. I brought six bees with me, and I'm down to four. The only hatching chick that sold so far was the one that my friend got. Car hangers. Um, I sold one B. <laughs> Two smaller turtles left. So this is what the little critter section is looking like. I think I sold a possum. Um, I can't really remember, but I have been writing everything down. One of the velvet bees is gone. So. People like, don't know what the shrimp are. <laughs> I'm definitely just gonna take those three and then make the bouquets and have the like shrimp we adore you bouquets again because I like that idea and that was the first thing I ever sold so I wanna make more of them. The small turtles, I may make more of those. I like that design. Mm, Keychains were like popping last time. I freehanded more strawberries. I made them a little bit different because I used Burnett Velvet this time. Look at the little pointy bottom on all of them. It's like the radish. And then I just freehanded some chickens. This better not be nope. Chicken butt. This is what it's looking like in here. It's the entrance. The door outside over there. I want to walk around. I'm just worried that somebody will find me. It's not going Hair update. This is what happens when my hair gets rained on. Um, it's 2 o'clock right now. My phone is at 15%. And I don't think there's any outlets near me. So... I don't know. Maybe I won't have any more sales and then I won't have to use my phone for the square reader. But it's going to keep dying if I do check-ins and talk to you. So bye. Okay, I have to do a voiceover for this part because the booth that was next to me was like jamming out to the soundtrack for Oh Brother Where Art Thou? <laughs> and it's just like really loud copyrighted music. So this was my booth when everybody started packing up. It ended a little bit early. I think it was supposed to go to 4 and everybody started packing up at 3.30. Um, it starting to, my table starting to look a little empty. So we got a missing cactus. I didn't sell any sunflowers this time, which I thought was kind of weird. I saw one lily and one daisy. I saw my first daisy. Um, a couple roses went. One headband. My only headband I've ever sold. Um... Or did I sell two headbands? Now I can't remember. No coasters. Every single worm's gone. 
I got some chickens left. I sold half the bees I brought, so I brought six regular ones. I think I brought two velvet and I sold one of them. Only one mystery egg left. Isn't that so crazy? I sold 11 of them. Keychain's looking pretty good still. Man, what was I talking about here? Really staying in this one spot, huh? I got little turtles. I got a couple little turtles left. Um, so I put the shrimp out to like fill it up because I made them to make bouquets and then absolutely nobody wanted them. And I did some trades with some people. So Bouquets by P gave me that pink gift basket for my daughter for Easter. And then I bought this purple purse that I'll talk about later. But look how pretty that gift basket is. She just gave it to me because she saw my daughter and it was the day before Easter. Okay, you know how everything happens for a reason? So I felt all, I felt like very self-conscious and uncomfortable because my hair got wet. But the lady that I loaned the canopy to She's going to place an order for 10 worms. Isn't that amazing? And she actually bought three of them. Her daughter bought two of them. And at the end of the day, she came, the, the lady came back to my booth and she bought the one that looks like poop. And I told her, I was like, I'm going to talk about this on the internet. Her name is Katie and she has a company called Little Bits of Happy. And she bought the poop worm and her daughter who goes to play group with my daughter at the library. So I actually see her daughter twice, um, twice a month at play group. Her daughter bought two of my worms. So it's like these worm people are going to be in my life because I'm going to keep seeing her daughter at play group, but I did a good deed and let her my canopy. And now she's going to place an order for 10 worms. Is that amazing? We're spreading worms everywhere. We're giving everybody worms. So I'm actually in my driveway right now. So don't be scared that I'm driving while I'm holding the phone up. <sighs> yep. Hair update. This is what happens when my hair gets wet. So I gotta go inside and spend some time with my baby since I haven't seen her all day. And I want to wish everybody a happy Easter. I had such a fun time. So now the market's over. I hope you liked all those clips. I haven't watched any of them. So I really don't even know <laughs> how I was holding the camera or anything. But um, let me talk about my thoughts about the market and then I'll go over like what's sold and everything. So this was my second market ever and it was so close to my house. It was insanely close, which made me feel very comfortable that it was so close. And also this market was ran by a vendor. The person running this market is somebody who owns a local freeze dried candy company. And I was really excited to do this market because like she's a vendor. So, and I wanted to see like how that was gonna be different. And the first thing that happened was when I walked into the place where the market was, the coordinator slash vendor came up to me and she said, Quinn, I saw at the Arbor Day Festival how you had a bunch of kids at your booth. So I want you to be right by the Easter Bunny. And I was so excited. That was so nice of her to be so considerate of the kind of like sales I was having and to even like pay attention to what was going on in my booth, you know, because she was busy at the Arbor Day Festival too. And this market was a lot different than my first one, but just because the space was like so packed together, like it wasn't... It wasn't too packed together where it was hard to move around, but the vendors were like a lot nearer each other. And that was because it had been raining for a couple days leading up to the market. So the coordinator slash vendor let everybody know that she was gonna try to squeeze as many people inside as she could because there were some vendors that chose to have booths outside. But then since it was gonna be raining, she gave the option like if they wanted to come inside, which I didn't mind being squeezed in. We didn't have like outlined spaces, like a 10 by 10 space that said we were gonna, where we were supposed to set up. And I probably even was like over the 10 by 10 space because I tried a new table arrangement where I did two four foot tables on the outside and the six foot on the inside. So I go to set up, have to do multiple trips because of our tiny car, which wasn't a problem. But, so I think I said it inside the clips, but because it was raining on one of my last trips home, I plugged in my hair curler and my straightener and stuff. And then on my last trip home, I like spent a few minutes redoing my hair because it just got like super frizzy and messed up from the rain. And a few minutes before the market started, it was like almost 11 o'clock. There were customers in the building and this woman comes up to me. And have you ever like met somebody where just like, where you just like pick up on their energy and you're just like, yes, this is somebody that I'm gonna vibe with that I know is like a good person. That's what happened. Like she starts talking to me. She compliments my shoes. I compliment her shoes. We were both wearing the same color green. Eventually she tells me that she's another vendor who has a booth outside in the rain and she doesn't have a canopy. 
So I immediately was like, I'm going home and getting you a canopy. I live behind those trees. I'll be right back. And I rush home. I grab the canopy. My husband has to help me put it in the car because it's so heavy. I've also never used this canopy. I'm borrowing it from my sister-in-law. I've never used it. I don't know if there's spiders inside of it. I rush back to where the market is and me and this woman get the canopy out and we get it set up in the pouring rain. And by the time I get back inside, I'm soaked. My jeans are wet, my hair is wet. I'm totally soaked. There were customers at my table when I walked inside. That did make me feel really anxious right at the start of the market because I had just tried to fix my hair. And I mean, I bet you can relate to like not liking the way you look and then it just makes you feel so unfortunately I was like really self-conscious just for the remainder of the entire market, but something about this market was just different than the Arbor Day Festival. And, and I know that it had to do mostly with the amazing vendors that were all around me. One that was directly in front of me, she just had one little tiny four foot table. Her name was Miriam and this lady was hilarious and so sweet. She like really reminded me of Tina Fey the entire time that we were talking. I was just like, this is Tina Fey. I feel like I'm meeting a celebrity. So she owns a handmade jewelry company called M's Pearls, where she's like actually getting the pearl out of the oyster and making jewelry with it. I saw her jewelry. I thought she was a reseller. I thought that she was a rep for that company. And then that was like a big company, but really it's just like her handmade creations. They looked that good. And just right off the bat, the second I meet her, she tells me, I don't know why I'm here. My daughter is in labor and she's about to have a baby. And I'm like, why are you here too? Do you want me to pack up your booth? You need help. I'm going to dump everything into a bin. You go. I live over here. I'll just dump it at my house. She was like, no, my daughter doesn't want me at the hospital yet. So the entire rest of the market, that neither of us had a customer, I would look over at her and be like, I need a baby update. Did your daughter have the baby? At one time, her daughter almost had an emergency C-section. We were both like panicking like I was sweating for her she was sweating everything was fine and she actually ended up buying a little bee from me to give to her daughter and to my left was this woman named Laura who had one of the most creative booths I've ever seen she sold custom crayons and she had these gift boxes where you could pick out which crayons you wanted and make a, like a little gift set and she even did kids' names and her setup looked so professional and it was her very first market ever I thought that she had been in the business for like years and yes we, we did get some crayons from her. We got two sets and they came in these gift boxes like how how cute is this idea like this is totally like a necklace like gift box and look at these look at these crayons. So this one is this one's a little dinosaur and there's a little lion. My daughter's like weirdly obsessed with lions and elephants. And the ones that fell were planets. One second. We got a little planet, an octopus, and a starfish. And these are so cute. And I've never seen anything like this before. And this is awesome for little baby hands to like grab the different shapes. It helps with like their pincer grasp and the different textures and colors. I thought I thought her I thought her booth was so cool. My mother-in-law even bought one of the name boxes. So she got to pick out the letters to spell my daughter's name. She bought my daughter one of the custom name boxes and I feel private about my daughter's name because she isn't like consented about me sharing it on the internet. I did rearrange the letters of her name to spell out a word so you can see what the crayons look like. Aren't those cool? Like isn't this a cool gift? I want one that says Quinn. I want crayons that say cat cake on them for absolutely no reason other than I want to use them. I'm going to link whatever social medias I can find for these vendors that I'm talking about down below in case anybody else wants to check them out. The vendor that was on my right hand side, her name was Patricia and she was so sweet and cute. And she had a very unique product too. I haven't seen anybody selling these and I haven't seen them on Facebook Marketplace either. But we did a trade and she picked out the big crying worm that I made. And I picked out this really sweet little ribbon rose box. I'm gonna give this to my mother-in-law for Mother's Day. But look how pretty these are. She just hand makes them. They're made out of ribbons. This just looks so sweet and vintage and dainty to me. I imagine somebody putting this next to their jewelry box on their vanity where like they have their makeup beautifully displayed and they have one of those perfume bottles with like the squeezer on it. I think it's really cool. People are so creative. Okay, this is just turning into like a market haul because now I'm just gonna show you what else I got. I picked up a skirt from this booth that has a shop in their home in Orville, California called California Charmer Girl. And this is what the skirt looks like. It's so fun. Look how long it is. 
It goes on for forever. It's like I have to hike it up really, really high when I wear it. But it has all these different fabrics on it. Like here's some tigers and stars and moons. And my favorite one is this one with a dragon on it. I think it's super cute and I'm probably gonna wear it to my next show. This skirt was $20 and this is only the second piece of clothing I have bought myself in the last year and a half. Isn't that amazing? I also bought myself this backpack. So I really like the color of this backpack but I also really like the fact that it's vegan leather. That's awesome. This backpack was also $20. And then I wanna talk about this booth that was there called Creations by Chelsea. This one was so sweet and she was selling sewn accessories inside her booth so she had like little wallets and phone holders and these are little wrist strap keychains these are sewn so well and the hardware is really nice and guess how much she was selling these for one dollar she was selling these for one dollar i'm gonna insert a clip that i took inside of her booth okay so this is another vendor that i'm at their store name is called creations with a z by chelsea I'm gonna have it written out and I want everybody to scream at her for her prices because look at this $1 lanyard. This would take me 45 minutes to make and she's selling it for a dollar. And her work is nice. Like look how straight these seams are. It's real, everything's cute. Like cha look, chapstick holder, little wallets. She has these amazing foam pouches for $10 and there's like multiple pockets inside. She's selling everything way, way, way too cheap. I've already yelled at her. Another vendor already yelled at her. Look, she sells little rice heating pads. Aren't those cool? And she's selling this for $5. The rice in here costs $12. We live in California. Everything's very expensive. Bookmarks. She's only selling them for a dollar. I sell bookmarks for $5. I also had essential oils on request to the heating pads. So all the, the cost sense. of the essential... I'm furious right now. I'm furious. Look, reusable cotton squares. I could crochet a cotton square and I would not be selling it for a dollar. I would be selling it for at least five. Um, okay, well, I'm furious. And I'm also gonna buy some stuff. Creations by Chelsea. I want, please say something nice to, to pump her up because she needs to raise her prices. I know she said she's just starting out, but she's selling herself so short. And I don't think even a dollar is covering the cost of the materials. I also bought from her one of those microwave rice bags, but I can't find it because we were already using it. And I think those were only $5. It's like that doesn't even cover the cost of the rice. She has a Facebook page and she ships. So if you guys are looking for gifts, if for like Mother's Day or birthdays or whatever, like check her out because we all need to support up and coming small businesses and I just could not believe that her prices were so cheap. I really do hope that in the future she raises her prices and I hope I get to see her again at other events around my town. And just like my last market I forgot to bring my bouquet bags which are these. I got these on Temu. They're just like sleeves with like um a clear part in the front but I was going to bring these so that like when people just buy like one or two flowers I can just slip them in and at least they'll look nice. So I regret not bringing those but I'll definitely bring them this weekend. I don't know what I need to do to make myself bring those bouquet bags but I'm just gonna leave them in my car. Well actually no because my dad's gonna drive me this weekend. I'll probably forget them again. I don't remember if I said this inside the clips that I filmed when I was at the market, but I had made these two pugs as a custom order for somebody that was supposed to pick them up at the market. He asked if I can make a little pug. And when he asked me, he was actually looking at the Poggies Place Little Critters. So he, he had like held up, I think it was like the bear. And he asked if I can make it look like a pug. And I was like, absolutely. So I did make him one based off the Poggies Little Critters um, pattern. But then I also made him this one that I kind of just freehanded. I used the cylinder shape from the potato Instagram post. But then when I saw that like literally every single piece was like a sewn on part and everything was so tiny, I was just like, I'm just going to do my own thing. So the cylinder shape body is the same number of stitches and increases as that post. But then I just freehanded the ears and the muzzle and I made him have limbs and he's sitting on his little butt which this is how Frankie said sometimes, so it's very cute. So, but the guy didn't show, so I don't know which one he would have picked anyways, but I'll take them to my flower market. I'll take them to the wildflower market and see if he comes to that one because 
Um, I didn't get his name. I didn't get any contact information. He just said, can I, can you make me a pug and I'll come to your next event? And I was like, absolutely. So if he never shows, then I'll just have these to put out on the table. So let's talk about what's sold. I still did not take beautiful photos of every single one of my items. So I could be one of those fancy YouTubers that goes like this and shows you the picture inside like a beautiful background. I promise one day I'll do that. And then I'll be one of those YouTubers that tells you the item and then has like a picture of it. So the big seller for this market was definitely the little mystery ducks and that is the pattern by Andy Light Creations on Instagram. It's a free pattern on her page. So I had brought 12 little mystery ducks and I came home with two. This one I was using as an example of what was inside the eggs. Someone had recommended doing that in the comments and it was a great idea because everybody was like, oh, it's one of these cute little ducks, but it's like, who knows what kind of color you're gonna get. And this is one that we had left. And how funny is this? It's like the ugliest one that I made. <laughs> so this is like an inverted mallard duck and I'm gonna make a bald eagle and then I didn't wanna use the rest of my brown posh on it. So I just did this and then I don't know what happened. I also sold out of every single worm and, and I priced these worms really cheap because most of them went to people that I knew. The flower worm, I sold to a woman that also bought a cactus for me and she was super sweet because she told me that she, she told me that I could charge her more to cover the square expenses because I told her like this was just, you know, my second market and I didn't know what I was doing. I think I was like struggling with like entering the cost of it. And she was like, oh, you can charge me a little bit more if you want to because I know you have to pay square expenses. And I was like, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm not going to charge you extra. In fact, actually, I charged her a lot less than I meant to because I had taken the tag off of that big cactus, the one that my mother-in-law tagged, because I was going to increase the price. I think the tag had said $25, I think, I can't remember, and I was going to make it like $35. And then I didn't even tag any of the worms. So what happened was that she put the big cactus in front of me and then the big worm and then my mind went blank and for some reason I think think I sold the big worm to her for $15 and then the big cactus I think I only sold for $20. Which I've totally learned my lesson about not individually tagging bigger items because every single time that somebody handed me a bigger item that didn't have a tag on it I instinctively was like this person's gonna like me more if I give them the item for cheaper so I like undersold myself on so many different things that I meant to increase the price on and I don't even want to tell you guys how much I sold the other worms for because they were going to people I know so I like gave them very very good deals an old coworker of mine she bought a hatching chick a medium-sized turtle and a chicken and I charged her $15 for all three of those things I know some people price the Mabel chickens at $15 a piece, so that just goes to show you the kind of deals I was giving people. And I don't know why I was even giving people such good deals because I have a market this weekend. Like I need that kind of inventory or at least to be making those sales to make it be worth it. So one funny thing about the worms is that I noticed this little girl inside the building that goes to play group with my daughter. And she's actually this girl that like we play with every single week. I don't want to say her name. But she ran up to me and she gave me a hug because she recognized me. She was like, hi, Quinn, I didn't know you'd be here. And she picked out two worms, the, both the pink ones, for her and her brother. So I gave her dad a fat discount because they were going to go to people that I knew, you know, and I wanted her to be happy. And then lo and behold, a little while later, the woman that I helped with the canopy from earlier she came inside the building and she said, hey, my daughter bought this cute worm from you. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's your daughter. I play with her every single Wednesday at Playgroup. And then her mom bought another worm from me. Her mom bought the one that looks like poop. <laughs> another vendor bought the one that was angry and gave it to the coordinator of the entire event. So I gave them a discount because I was going to another vendor. And I made the trade with Patricia, the Pratisha, the girl behind me that sold the silk roses for the sad worm. So literally the only worm that I sold for even like a little bit of money was the flower worm that I definitely underpriced myself on because that worm had those big gigantic custom eyes that I painted and I sold it for $20. No, I sold it for $15. Oh my gosh, I sold it. I was really underselling myself. The things that I thought were gonna be super popular this time that were popular at the Arbor Day Festival weren't as popular. So like for the sitting bees, I had sold five of them last time and I think this time I sold three. One of them was a little velvet one. 
which was the same pattern as the regular sitting bees, but just because it came out so much smaller and said the burnett velvet, I sold it for $7 instead of eight. I sold two roses, one lily and one daisy, my first daisy to sale, to sell, my first daisy sell. And the roses were $10 each, the lilies and the daisies were both 15. And also almost every single person I had paid with cash instead of card. So my first market, it was about 50-50. I think I had made like equal amounts of card payments and cash payments. And this time I was really happy that pe most people were paying with cash because my phone wasn't recognizing the little card reader, which is okay because most people do tap to pay, but there's weirdly like some banks, like the one my husband uses that doesn't use tap to pay and you have to slide their card. And my phone was like not recognizing it. And also I found out that if you have your Bluetooth headphones on, it won't recognize it at all. So turn off your headphones or like disconnect your headphones before you're using your square reader because it just messes it up. And maybe that's why I was having problems. So in square, I made a total of $98 from card transactions and I had to pay a fee of $3.50. My grand total, including cash transactions was $350 minus the square fee of $3.50 minus my booth fee, which was $30 minus the purse that I bought, which was $20, minus the skirt that I bought, which was also $20. My take home pay from this event was about $280. So another added expense that I need to calculate in is the fact that I broke my glasses during the market. Actually, I think I broke my glasses when I was unloading my like tables and stuff once I got home and they were my only pair that had my current prescription in them. So I immediately had to buy new glasses which kind of sucks because now I'm like trying to market prep and crocheting more and I can't like, I'm going to get a headache. So I ordered some new glasses off of Firmu, which is, you know, that chief glasses website, which is where I got these. And I really do like these frames. And I used to work for an ophthalmology company. So I know how crazy overpriced frames are pairs of glasses. And I think that it was like, I think my total from Firmu was $40. So I need to minus that out of my market take home, which was 280. So my take home pay is like 240. So it's like half of what my first market was, which is still really good to me as somebody who's earning $0. My big plan is that I wanna earn enough money by doing markets to buy my daughter a jungle gym for our yard. And I'm gonna start putting a portion of my market earnings inside of this cookie jar until I earn enough money to buy her a swing set. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I will cut that part out. No, cause we'll just cut the video out unless you wanna be in it. So I would say that my husband's not going to know that I'm going to hide money inside this jar, but he just walked by while I was holding it up. But also he probably doesn't know where I'm going to put this jar inside our house. Thou shall not steal cookies jar. This is going to be the strawberry girl, baby girl, tiny baby, sweet baby, jungle gym, home swing fund. This means to my last thing that I was going to talk about is that after the market was over and I've been like chaotically trying to crochet in my free time, which is when my daughter's asleep. I have this disability where I just keep worth making worms instead of things that I should be making, like things that people would be interested in buying. And all I just keep doing is making worms. So I don't really apply to many t pattern test posts because I don't think I'm going to get picked. But when I saw Little Forest Makes post this one, I was like, I'm just going to apply because she's so sweet and cute and I really hope that I get picked for it. And look how precious she is. Every pattern by Little Force Makes is so cute, you guys. It's creating this whole like whimsical world where all these little creatures live and have tea parties and parties together. And this little strawberry girl just like lives in probably like a little hobbit hole and drinks out of a thimble. Later with Burnett Velvet and she turned out so, so sweet. And her little bloomers, I used the Dollar Tree White, her mirror, and they're just like a little bit fuzzy and really, really cute. The reason why she's so special is because i don't know if you guys will have noticed but inside the background of my videos you will have seen um a strawberry pinata above my couch and also some strawberry cutouts with my daughter's face in them which are over here i guess i can show it's just that my table's really dirty okay look over there can i zoom in? can you zoom in nope you can't zoom in on front facing cameras and there's my strawberry pinata If anyone says anything about my dirty table, I will be so upset. So the pinata and the little strawberry cutouts are 
actual decorations from our daughter's very first birthday when she turned one which she's gonna be two in like a couple months so they've just been like hanging up living inside of our house and the reason why we had a strawberry themed birthday for her was because ever since she's been able to eat she was like devoured strawberries I want to like say what her name is but we always call her by different nicknames like funny ones and one of the things that we always say is like whatever food she likes we'll call her like a butter baby or butter girl we call her strawberry girl we call her noodle girl and the little baby is definitely a strawberry girl so it was really cute and nice to be able to make strawberry girl for my strawberry girl but i definitely want to pick up the other patterns inside the collection the garlic boy you guys market is over and now i have had two market experiences <laughs> anxiety about my third market because it's definitely gonna be my biggest one the vendor map for this market is crazy i'll put a picture here um i am all the way at the bottom of the map and my sister-in-law who did markets also um the one that had the soap business that i'm using all of her like tables and stuff she told me that she's did in this market before and she was like near the bottom of the map where i am and that she did not have a good year that time so it's not like setting me up to feel very optimistic about this market, but I still need to market prep because I am out of a lot of inventory. I didn't completely sell out of everything, but I sold out of some things and some things I didn't even bring, like I didn't bring bookmarks this time. I definitely want to make those for the wildflower festival because my bookmarks are like nature themed, you know, like the sprouts and the flowers. And I also need to assemble the other flowers that I have and work on the poppies. I'm gonna put this part in the video because to like make myself actually do them because I did write a poppy pattern and I have five of them like I have enough petals to assemble five of them but I need to go to Walmart and get some more of that orange cotton from peaches and cream I had bought in the red super saver acrylic that was bright orange and oh my gosh it is garbage it is so terrible it's so fuzzy and just hurts my hands to, to do and I don't even know what I'm gonna use it on because I just hate it so much traffic cone orange like should I make a traffic cones with it is that something people want I mean I have to edit this in but I wanted to show that I brought this in as an example for when people see my warning about the safety eyes and so this was just that little half circle when I was talking about the inside out versus um you know right side out uh clockwise crochet and I just put one safety eye in it as an example for people to to look at and then I would I would let them hold it and like show them the back and how like it attaches and everything and i even brought with me one of my tools which is this these things from amazon to put the safety eyes on which i like and i don't like um i like it because you know you can apply apply a lot of force to it to shove on the safety eye but you have to put like this part on a table and then it slips and slides everywhere when you're when you're putting pressure on it and i don't know i don't know how i feel about that yet look at this eyelash totally recommend if you're just starting markets or maybe you've already go try something like this and hand it to your customers and have them look at it because once they saw the way the eyes were put on I think it made people feel a little bit better about it it's not like I was selling things to infants or like you know tiny tiny little babies but like moms that had small children you know like five years old or whatever they would see that sign and be like what are the small pieces because I just think that it kind of like put people at ease like seeing how secure these backings are and that's it. Um, I want to thank everybody. Wish me good luck at the last market that I did. The flower festival is this weekend in Orville, California. I'm having anxiety about how much I need a market prep for it. But if anybody wants to be like super, super awesome, you can check out some of the vendors that I talked about. And thank you in advance for not talking about how messy my table was. Bye. Mm -hmm.